Hello, welcome to Strategies for Healthy Eating While Working From Home. Before I get started, I want to just point out some resources that are available. The first one is from the Healthy Staff um, Group with over 5,560 members. The goal is to foster a work environment that is healthy and secure. The group ensures members are provided with knowledge and information on how to live their best healthy life. And you can find this group on Yammer. All sorts of topics are covered, including family and youth health, women's health, men's health, nutrition, exercise, mental health, and latest research in health and wellness. Uh, stay tuned to that group for additional upcoming webinars. Another resource the World Bank Group provides to staff is the health and wellness program. So you can find this at connectwithyourhealth.com. After a health assessment, you can receive personalized health recommendations, access to e-coaching, and health education support through videos, webinars, and articles. So make sure you visit www.connectwithyourhealth.com for more information. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Lynette Simpson. And I've been a knowledge management officer with the Global Knowledge and Learning Office at IFC for the past seven years. I am a certified nutrition specialist, licensed nutritionist with a master's degree in clinical nutrition. For the past few years, I've spent a portion of my time as a nutrition advisor with the Health and Safety Directorate and recently connected with Louis Swartz as a team lead on nutrition for the Healthy Staff Group. Okay. Let's go. How are you doing? Maybe you can relate. These trends are showing that people are baking more, snacking more, drinking more alcohol, have an increase of cravings, and eating more comfort foods. Of course, stress, anxiety, easy access, boredom, all these contribute to less than ideal nutrition. So let's talk about strategies. My goal today is to offer several options, and then you can decide what resonates with you and what you want to try. You want to start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. So the presentation today is around 30 minutes, and we'll be covering how to structure your time, control your environment, keep it simple, and optimize nutrition. All right. Let's jump right in on how to structure your time. We may not have control over many things in life right now, but we can structure our day with some set routines. Kids and adults thrive on some structure and routine regarding meal timing, especially. This you can control since open access to eating can lead to overeating, making poor choices, and kids not coming to the table hungry if they've filled up on too many snacks throughout the day. Treat food like you would in the office. You can't be grazing all day long when you're there, so act the same way at home. Breakfast might be more individualized, but generally as an example, you'd say to your family, everyone should eat breakfast by 9 a.m. and before you begin work. Lunch at 1 and dinner at 6. For those of you who practice intermittent fasting or prefer just two meals a day, that's fine. We have a schedule. This will prevent you from mindlessly nibbling throughout the day. Also, family meal times are a great way to connect and will limit the free for all. This is important because <laughs> you don't want to be tempted by others eating in the kitchen at all odd times of the day or feeling like you need to go clean up the kitchen area multiple times per day. For our family, it took a couple of weeks of asking, what time are we eating dinner? to get into the groove of the six o'clock dinner, but it works really well. It is something to look forward to and it marks the end of the work day. Close the kitchen after dinner. So when the meal is done, it's done. This will curtail extraneous snacking. If you feel like you need something or crave something, take deep breaths and ask yourself, am I hungry or thirsty or just bored? If you're starving, of course, you should eat something healthy. For example, a hard-boiled egg or an apple, and ask yourself, am I hungry enough to eat a hard-boiled egg? 
I mean, we can all say yes to the chocolate and desserts, but if you're going to break the kitchen is closed rule, then it should be for something healthy. Use time-saving appliances. I have a food a Ninja Foodie, which combines a slow cooker, pressure cooker, roaster, and air fryer all in one, and I absolutely love it. During the week, I like to throw a chuck roast and various root vegetables into the slow cooker on low, and then by dinner time, the meal is ready, no fuss. A pressure cooker significantly reduces the amount of time needed to cook tough proteins, um, as well as other food, just in a short amount of time. And since the meals are sealed into an airtight environment for cooking, vitamins, nutrients, and flavors remain trapped inside the ingredients, so it's a good, healthy option. I've had success with brisket, pork, spaghetti squash, um, and making bone broth. All delicious and in much less time compared to using my stove or the oven. Okay, control your environment. Number one, eat away from your desk and at the table. You might be tempted to continue working through your lunch break now that your coworkers aren't physically there to prod you away. But don't do it. Being distracted during a meal can lead to overeating and decreased satiety, which is satisfaction and fullness. Instead, take a break from work to sit down at the table and enjoy your lunch or go outside and enjoy your lunch and relax for a few minutes. You'll enjoy the meal more and it may even help you feel more prepared for the rest of your day. Number two, avoid the kitchen as much as possible. By now, hopefully, you've set your desk in an area that is not anywhere near the kitchen. Otherwise, you might be tempted to wander over and check the refrigerator for the 10th time if it is always in your line of vision. Decide that the only time you will be in your kitchen during the workday is when you are getting ready to have a planned meal. If this is hard to follow, hang a sign or post it on your fridge and pantry to remind you that the kitchen is closed until the next scheduled meal. Number three, put away all food and snacks. Out of sight equals out of mind. If you have space in the pantry or a cupboard to put snacks, it is much less tempting to put them away than to leave them on the counter. One caveat is if you're trying to encourage your children to eat more healthy snacks, such as apples, leave these out so that they will uh, be seen and they'll reach for these instead. Even if you eat fairly healthy, for the most part, it can be a struggle to manage how much you eat. So let's talk about managing portions. Take one serving and eat it from a plate instead of straight out of the container, box, or bag. This will help you make be more mindful of how much you're actually eating versus when you start munching on something and suddenly the container is empty. It's gone. I'm guilty of this, thinking, oh, I'll just take one or two, but then before I know it, it's all gone. Avoid eating in front of a television, computer, iPad, or while distracted from any other activity. Each meal should be eaten at the table without distraction. This will allow you to focus on what you are eating and fully take in the smell and taste of the food. Eat slowly so your brain can register when your stomach is full. And this could take up to 15 minutes. You can pause and put down your fork between each bite. Try to take smaller bites, chewing your food thoroughly, and enjoying each bite completely. One of my favorite tips is to eat with chopsticks, which will slow down most people. Use smaller dishes, bowls, and glasses. Um, this is a rhetorical question. Do we have any members from the Clean Plate Club? That's me, for sure. Um, we tend to fill up our plates and eat everything off of our plates. So a smaller plate or bowl or glass will enforce smaller portions. Try using a salad plate for dinner. And of course, aim to fill up half of that plate with vegetables. Freeze food you won't serve or eat right away. So if you make too much, and if you struggle with taking second and third helpings, this is a great strategy to prevent you from overeating. If you're eating with a family, make sure everyone has had enough and then put it away. Also, if you keep serving platters or dishes away and off of the table, this out of sight, out of mind strategy, you'll be less likely to take another serving. It'll take more effort for you to get up and to go get more. I like to keep the food in their cooking vessels right on or near the stove. 
So in addition to keeping it out of sight, it is less mess and less dishes to clean up. Eat meals at regular times so that you are not starving and prone to overeating or grabbing whatever unhealthy options are easiest. And if you are trying to change your eating habits, one easy method is to crowd out the bad food with good food. So don't think about all of the highly processed food that you shouldn't or can't have. Instead, focus on eating real whole food. If you have to snack, make sure you have healthy options only, such as nuts, seeds, berries. The goal is to concentrate on adding in the good foods, which will automatically make you less likely to eat the junk food. Okay, and for those healthy snacks that may come in bulk, or actually any food that comes in bulk like that, you will want to pre-portion them into individual servings. This helps keep you aware of how much you're eating, makes it more effort to get another serving, and less prone to overeat. So the first time I did this with a bag of walnuts, my husband was shocked at how much a serving was, which was about a quarter cup, versus what he was actually grabbing and eating. And one more tip for managing portions is to be sure you stay hydrated. Um, sometimes you reach for food when actually you are just thirsty. So get in the habit of first having a drink of water before reaching for a snack. And be sure you are setting caffeine limits. Caffeine is dehydrating and too much is known to cause headaches, anxiety, digestive issues, and even fatigue. None of which are ever good, but particularly not good when you are trying to work. Um, aim for no more than two caffeinated beverages per day, preferably before noon to avoid the jittery feeling. And just an extra little plug here, avoid those flavored creamers and other highly processed add-ins. They have a ton of chemicals. All right, let's talk about how to stop yourself from eating aptly called stoppers. Here's a good trick. If um, have a piece of gum or strong mint next to your plate. So when you're done eating, you pop it into your mouth, and this will help prevent you continuing to graze. You can also try this while you are working on um, prepping your food. So if you tend to pick and eat as you make dinner, have a piece of gum or a mint while you're doing this to prevent you from this. Same idea after you're done eating, go brush your teeth. Uh, serve and save. As mentioned, once you have served yourself and family, put any leftovers into containers and into the refrigerator or freezer. Save the rest for another meal. As soon as you are done eating, take your dishes to the sink or dishwasher. Other ways to signal to your brain that you are done are to leave the kitchen. So go take a walk, call a friend. These are all good ways to disrupt and block the mindless eating. Let's talk about how to keep it simple. Some people, some people, they really enjoy trying new recipes and find it relaxing to cook and create meals. If this is not you, don't feel bad. Meals can be simple. Pick a protein, vegetable, healthy fats. To avoid snacking on fatty, sweet foods, ensure your meals are balanced and have variety. Don't fear healthy fats. Fat provides the most abundant energy reserve in the body, and because it is slowly digested in the stomach, it extends the amount of time that energy can be utilized. So eating some healthy fatty food during lunch will help you to stay full longer and prevent possible sugar cravings. So for example, avocado, olives, avocado oil, nuts, seeds, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines, these are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and also shown to increase endurance and encourage stored fat to be burned for energy. So that's a nice extra plus. All right, how to plan for success. Create a grocery list and stick to it. If you're ordering groceries online, you have the advantage of being less tempted by non-necessities and treats. Don't buy the junk food. If it isn't in your house, you can't eat it. Eat before you shop, so you're less likely to give in to cravings and impulse purchases. And one of my favorite ideas is to double a recipe so there's enough for dinner and then lunch the next day. This is the cook once, eat twice strategy. And if you don't mind leftovers, this can minimize your time and effort in the kitchen. We'll talk about some additional tips regarding meal prepping and batch cooking in a minute. Try a meal service, meal kit service. 
Now might be an excellent time to try it. All of the ingredients with simple instructions are delivered to you, so you don't have to worry about groceries, and your meals are planned in advance. It may help with portion control as everything is measured out for a specific number of servings. I haven't tried this personally, but I know people that, that use it and really enjoy the convenience and the healthy options. Stock up on sales and buy in bulk when you can so that you always have healthy options to choose from. Um, buying frozen vegetables and fruits. Most people are surprised to hear that frozen vegetables and fruits are as nutritious as fresh since they are harvested and flash frozen when they're at their peak. So don't be afraid to buy frozen vegetables and fruits. And plus, they're, they're easy to stack up on. Okay, let's talk about meal prep. It simply means working ahead of time. You either get the ingredients for a recipe ready to cook or cooking one to several recipes ahead of time before eating them. So for example, roasting a chicken with vegetables and and portioning it out into individual servings for future lunches. Or you could spend time on the weekend prepping one or two dinners to be eaten later, allowing you to commit to cooking every other day. Another related method is called batch cooking, where you make one big batch of an item and then eat it throughout the week, such as stews, soups, casseroles, roasted vegetables, refrigerator-friendly salads. It doesn't work for everyone, but can have several advantages such as saving you time throughout the week, reducing mealtime stress, <clears throat> and controlling portion size better. For me, I like to cook large dinners to ensure leftovers for lunches as well as batch cook items. So on the weekend I typically make a batch of Greek yogurt, a dozen hard boiled eggs, cut up vegetables to eat raw or to roast, um, and then some sort of protein, either a roast chicken or double batch of meatballs. And this has been very helpful since the quarantine started. We're all at home eating most of our meals from this kitchen. If you're interested in trying meal prep, I enjoyed reading the book, Cook Once, Eat All Week, and there's information about the book there. The last strategy is a big one, optimizing your nutrition. Most important is to focus on real food. Balanced, nutritious food makes us more productive. It keeps us fuller longer and helps us focus. It's important to really understand that what you eat will impact your mood, energy level, and health. So think about this the next time you're feeling hungry and just want to grab a handful of chocolate from the pantry. This will spike your blood sugar and then lead to an energy crash and craving for more sugar. Instead, focus on protein, healthy fats, low sugar fruits, and vegetables. Planning a menu ahead of time will make it easier to avoid noshing on whatever looks tastiest and quickest in the moment. Drink water. Avoid having sugar-laden beverages such as soda or juices. Instead, opt for sparkling water, flavored water, or mineral water. Let's chat a minute about alcohol consumption. So alcohol sales, not surprisingly, rapidly spiked in the month of April. According to the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, moderate alcohol consumption is defined as up to one drink per day for women and up to two drinks per day for men. And keep in mind, from a nutritional perspective, there's no value to your health. However, many people enjoy a glass of wine with dinner, so let me just say that it is best to have none, but if you do consume it, keep moderation in check. Um, let me just give you some tips and tricks to moderate the alcohol. So number one, check your one drink is actually one drink. A glass of wine is five ounces, so measure this out and check that you are actually pouring five ounces. Number two, limit sugary cocktails made with sugary mixers or simple syrups. These are just full of excess empty calories. Number three, consider low or no alcohol drinks for an alternative. And number four, be careful about relaxing your own rules. So increased use tends to begin with relaxing the typical rules around alcohol. The challenge is to be mindful of what the usual rules, rules would have been and then trying to stick with them. So if you typically have a glass of wine with dinner, it makes sense to stick with that. Don't go for a second glass. Similarly, if you never would have previously considered drinking before 5 p.m., 
then don't start now. The next strategy is to track your food. It doesn't have to be long term, but even if you track for a couple of days, you might be surprised at what, when, or how much you are eating. It is a great tool to bring awareness to your eating patterns and choices. And as a side bonus, studies show that people who track their food intake tend to be more successful at losing weight and sticking to a healthy diet. Of course, you can use paper and pen to record and track, but there are also some great apps like MyFitnessPal to track. Most importantly is to choose nutrient-dense food, and given the current circumstances, let's talk about specific nutrients to support your immune system. Several nutrients can boost immune function, so let's talk about the following and how you can incorporate them into your diet. Vitamin A has a vital role in maintaining healthy immune functions. The compound is found as retinol, which is preformed vitamin A, in animal products and as carotenoids or pro-vitamin A in fruits and vegetables. Animal food sources rich in retinol include eggs, butter, beef liver, and fish oils. Rich source sources of carotenoids include orange and green vegetables such as sweet potato, pumpkin, spinach, cantaloupe. Vitamin C may offer protection against infections including those caused by bacteria and viruses. Regularly administered vitamin C has been shown to shorten the duration of colds and during an illness can also act as a natural antihistamine and anti-inflammatory. Fruits and vegetables high in vitamin C include kiwi, grapefruit, strawberries, red pepper, broccoli, brussels sprouts, and tomatoes. Vitamin D. This nutrient supports the immune system, helping to reduce the risk of cold and flu. Studies have shown that many people are deficient, so you may want to ask your doctor about getting your vitamin D levels checked. But regardless, everyone can benefit from getting 15 minutes of sun exposure around lunchtime between 10 and 2, if possible. You can also seek foods such as fatty fish, mackerel, salmon, sardines, eggs, and mushrooms. Selenium, a critical nutrient for immune function, it is also an antioxidant that helps boost the body's defenses against bacteria and viruses. Selenium is easily obtained from foods. Good sources include beef, chicken, pork, brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, tuna, clams, and shrimp. Zinc plays a critical role in boosting immunity and can help to reduce the frequency of infections as well as the duration and severity when taken within 24 hours of onset. Examples of good food sources are shellfish, oysters, crab, beef, pork, dark meat, eggs, and nuts. And listed here are the sources that I use to compile the information. Okay, now to kind of wrap this up and reiterate some of the strategies that we've, we've talked about so far, I'd like to present some problems and solutions. Problem number one. Dinner time with kids is crazy and they don't want to eat healthily. Solution, kids that are involved in creating meals and snacks are more likely to eat them. You want to engage them in age appropriate tasks. So children preschool to age seven should be able to collect ingredients, assist in measuring, stir, and mix by hand and pour. Ages eight and older, they should be able to set a timer, preheat the oven, use a microwave and use a knife with supervision. If you have teenagers or young adults, assign them a night to be responsible for dinner. And then for sure, they will love everything that you make for them going forward. <laughs> Problem number two, I cannot stop eating. Endless eating is a risk when one is left to their own devices. The best defense against this is pre-portioning out your food and not stocking your fridge and pantry like a vending machine. If you think you're hungry, but don't feel like eating an apple, you're probably not really that hungry. Do you remember how you used to pack yourself a lunch for the office? There's no reason you have to quit doing that. Get some washable containers or a bento box and make and pack a reasonable amount of food for the next day. If you eat your lunch and still feel hungry, then eat an apple. But generally, make sure your meals are large enough, balanced, and have variety so you won't need to snack. That's the key. Problem number three, I don't have time to cook. Once again, packing a lunch or preparing 
Your dinners on the weekends, when you have more time, will save you here. You will reap the benefits of having your food cooked, portioned, and ready to go. We talked about different ways you can go about this. So one, you can make your lunch the night before. This can be leftovers. Or you can make something completely different. Just put it in a ready-to-go container for the next day. Uh, two, you can make a big batch of something and eat from it throughout the week. The soups, stews, casseroles, fridge-friendly salads are all good. Great choices. Three, you can set up a mix and match meal plan. So I probably could eat the same meal day after day, but my family does not agree. So by using batch cooking, they can create a myriad of different meals. For example, my husband might have egg salad with roasted vegetables for lunch. So the eggs and the veggies were both batch cooked on the weekend. Well, my daughter will have roasted chicken made on the weekend with cut up vegetables prepped on the weekend, in a salad. Also, this is a good tip, if the pre-cooked items aren't going fast enough during the week, I'll have a leftover night for dinner when everyone has to pick something that's already prepared from the fridge. And the fourth idea is to make a bento box or plowman's lunch. So bento is a single portion meal common in Japanese, Taiwanese, or Korean cuisines and other Asian cultures. A traditional bento holds rice or noodles, fish or meat with pickled and cooked vegetables. A plowman's lunch is an English cold meal of bread, cheese, and onions with butter, pickles, sometimes green salad, ham, eggs, apple. But the idea is compile a lunch with a bunch of small portions of your favorite things, which is a really good cheese, a piece of fruit, quarter cup of nuts, this will make you look forward to your midday meal, and it's really easy to throw together. Problem number four. I forget to eat until 3 p.m., at which point I'm a hangry mess. Solution. This goes back to structuring your day. Set aside time in your calendar as a reminder if you need to. Don't feel bad about taking a break to feed yourself. You will feel better and will be more productive by setting aside time for yourself. Avoid, if at all possible since everyone has to eat, to have back-to-back -back meetings every day, all day. Where possible, see if you can shave even 15 minutes off of a meeting to step away and go eat in your kitchen or outside. Number five, comfort food is comforting. The solution, implement self-care. So find other ways to cope that are rewarding and beneficial for your health. Instead of reaching for that donut, the candy, the buttermilk biscuits, reach out to a friend, play a game with the family, get outside, take deep breaths, meditate, stretch, take a break from the news, take a hot bath, go to bed early. So to recap, most strategies implore you to structure your time, control your environment, keep it simple, and optimize nutrition. Start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can. I hope this WebEx has been helpful to you. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or ideas about what you would like to see for future online sessions. I do have a nutrition community on the IFC internet that is open to all World Bank Group staff if you are interested. You can also find various nutrition and lifestyle book reviews under my LinkedIn profile. And just a reminder, stay tuned to the Healthy Staff Group Yammer page for future sessions on health and wellness. Thank you very much.